Christine Sinclair of Team Canada, joining us here on Tim and Sid from McAllen, Texas, site of the CONCACAF Women's Olympic Qualifying. Christine, it is great to talk to you. It is great to see you. Uh, Sid Sixero, face of Camisa here. On behalf of a lot of Canadian sports fans who uh, don't get the chance to talk to you the way I am, congratulations. Did your <laughs> phone blow up? Uh, it didn't quite blow up, um, but it, yeah, I think it was on the verge. <laughs> um, I, I know doing these, these types of interviews isn't your favorite thing. How many have you had to do since, and are you looking forward to them ending? Uh, I actually haven't done too many. I mean, a few last night, this is like my second today. Um, but yeah, I'm, yeah I'm, gonna, I'm excited to just get back to the soccer part of my job. Uh, speaking of excitement, how excited were you then to finally cross this off the list? I know it was probably something that was creeping up on your mind and something you were thinking of. How happy were you to get it done and get it done early in that game as well? Yeah, I mean, I think it's just a, a relief. Uh, I mean, it's been something that's obviously been on my mind. Uh, every time I speak to media people, it was brought up, I'd say, for the past two to three years. So it's just nice to get it over with in a good way. Um, early in this tournament, I mean, this is a massive tournament for us uh, with obviously very big implications in trying to qualify for the Olympics. So it's nice that the focus of our team can now turn to just qualifying. We saw the reaction on the field with your teammates. What was the scene back in the room? How excited was everybody? So they, like, conveniently made me walk in last. I had no idea what was happening. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, just walked into champagne and, like, all the plastic up in the locker room. Uh, it, it was quite the scene. Um, but it was just, for me to be able to share the moment with my teammates, the staff, I mean, I told them last night I've grown up with some of them on this national team. And to be able to share the experience with them uh, makes it so much more special. When you started with, with the national team program in this country, the senior national team program, you were 16 years old. What, were, yeah. what was your goal when you started? What were your realistic goals as, as a 16-year-old Christine Sinclair? And could you, in your wildest dreams, have imagined statistics like this? <laughs> uh, so when I was first on the national team, it was just to like try to play. Um, those were my goals. Um, Evan Pellerud was the new coach at the time and took a chance on me as a young 16 year old. But in my second game, I scored my first goal. And I'm not going to lie, I was in that moment was like, I'm going to I'm going to try and catch Mia. Uh, Mia at the time, Mia Ham held the record. And I thought it was insane how many goals she had scored in her career. And obviously, I should have set my sights higher, not knowing that someone would have passed her in the meantime. Um, but no, I mean, I, I never would have actually imagined sitting here answering these questions today. So as you know, with that said, as you've reflected today, has the context of what you accomplished hit you at all today? Because I heard an interview with one of our colleagues, Brendan Dunlop, yesterday, and you said you didn't really, you know, uh, you know, hadn't hadn't sunk in yet. Has it sunk in today a little bit more? Uh, I mean, a little bit. It's it's you got to understand it's hard when you're in tournament mode. Yeah. Um, like we have three games in like seven days it's it's a lot so i think that the record will be something that once this tournament's over will sink in and will actually truly be able to celebrate and go see my family um, i spoke to them last night and they they were very excited um, but yeah I, I think it's just something that'll sink in once we've qualified for the olympics Christine Sinclair here on Tim and Sid. It is impossible, Christine, out of 185 goals to pick your favorite, but I'm going to ask you to pick your favorite. Which one stands out the most? Uh, oh, so there's this one going on. It's, it's online right now in one of, the, I think, the video the CSA made. It's a left-footed bomb against Brazil. Um, hands down, the best goal I've ever scored in my career. Uh, so in terms of, like, that that's my favorite one in terms of impact probably the game winning goal to to secure bronze in rio that was pretty special i was going to ask you about impact not with regards to which goal is your favorite 
But the impact on the younger generation of Canadian soccer fans, specifically girls, we know the women have long been holding it down sports-wise in this country, but we've seen an emergence of, or so of a few in very different sports over the last few years as well. How much pride do you take in being a role model for the younger generation, specifically young girls? Yeah, I mean, for me, it's a, it's a role I take very seriously. Um, I mean, when I was growing up, I was looking up to, to male athletes. I mean, Roberto Alomar was my hero. Um, so now it's, it's nice to know that young girls have female role models to look up to. They, have, they can now aspire to, you know, win majors in tennis, uh, you know, win Olympic medals in soccer. It's, it's pretty special, and I think it's probably one of the most important roles that I, I have is to help inspire the next generation and show them that anything's possible. Christine, when you, when you look at that all-time list now, the one that you own, a lot of names <laughs> around you are American. That must feel good. Yeah, they are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm not going to lie, it does. Um, no, I mean, for so long, the Americans have obviously been the powerhouse in, in women's soccer. It's nice to get a this victory over them in, in a way, um, but no, I mean, I, I, but honestly, I have so much respect for them and so much respect for, for what they've done for women's sports, not just soccer, uh, the torch that they carry. Um, they're the, the example for, for a lot of us. So, so much respect for them, but yeah, it, it's nice to get one, one up on them in this. I hear you, no doubt. No doubt. Uh, Christine, before we let you go, because you are at a really significant tournament, the CONCACAF Olympic qualifiers, um, the World Cup did not end the way any of you expected. We know that story. Yeah. Uh, hopefully you guys get through this next week and go to Tokyo. My question to you is, what do the next several years look like for Christine Sinclair past a hypothetical Olympics? Are you looking at another World Cup? Is the passion still yeah. deep for you? Like, how, how much longer do you want to continue to represent this country in this way? You know, that is the question, isn't it? Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'd say for the past four or five years, I had always planned on aiming for, aiming for Tokyo and then sort of reassessing after that. Uh, for me, obviously, still have the passion and the, like, competitive fire in me uh, to keep going. Um, yeah, who knows? Who knows what'll happen? Uh, as a Canadian soccer supporter, uh, the both of us, please stay around for a while. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll, I'll see what I can do. <laughs> yeah, on behalf of the Voyagers and everyone, please stay around for a while. Um, there's only one person on Earth who has scored 185 goals internationally for their country, and she's from Burnaby, BC. Christine Sinclair, congratulations yeah. again. Best of luck in this thank tournament, you. and uh, and thank you for your time. Awesome. Thank you so much.